Hi everyone and welcome to the video on the sum and difference identities. In these, uh, these identities, what we're going to be looking at is when we take the sine, cosine, and tangent of a sum or difference of two angles. Okay, and, and, the, and the patterns that are associated with that. So, our skill objectives for this particular video are, one, find the exact values of trig functions using the sum or difference identities, and number two, develop new identities from the sum or difference identities. And we have one conceptual objective, and that's really to understand that the trigonomic fun function of a sum is not the same as the sum of the two trig functions. What this last, what this conceptual objective means, really, is that if I take, for example, the sine of something like 30 degrees plus 45 degrees, that is not equal to just the sine of 30 degrees plus the sine of 45 degrees. You can actually take this, put it into your calculator, and confirm that, but that is something that you have to keep, you have to realize that that does not work. Now the basis of these uh, sum and difference identities is from the distance formula, which you can see in this illustration. This is an illustration that is in your book. okay? Uh, and with the distance formula, we get to the sum and difference identities for cosine. And then through those and the co-function identities, we can get the sum and difference identities for sine. And when you put both of those together, we can get the sum and difference identities for tangent. Now the proofs of these and the, de where they, the development of these are in your book in, uh, in, the, in section 6.2, and we'll point those out during class, but uh, I'm not going to go through the proof for the development of those right here. What we have, I have the first four for the sum and difference for cosine. Uh, the sum of cosine is cosine of a plus b, whatever a and b are, their angle measures, is going to be equal to the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus sine of a sine of b. And the cosine difference formula by difference to a minus b. Cosine of a minus b equals cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. For the sine, uh, we know that the sum formula for sine is going to be sine of a plus b equals sine of a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. In the difference formula, you get sine of a minus b equals sine of a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. Now these formulas are ones that you are going to, uh, we're going to be using in this section quite a bit. Uh, we'll have to apply those and try to and simplify expressions to try to go and answer questions with these. Let's take a look at this example here. Uh, we're going to use the fact that the that five pi over twelve equals three pi over four minus pi over three to find the exact values of both cosine of five pi over twelve and the sine of five pi over twelve. To do this, we're going to need the cosine difference formula and the sine difference formula. So what we have when we're working on this one, we know the cosine of 5 pi over 12 by this fact up here, we know that's equal to the cosine of 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 3. And therefore, by the cosine difference formula, I know that's the cosine of the first times the cosine of the second plus sine of the first times sine of the second. And so what I have here is cosine of 3 pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 3 plus the sine of 3 pi over 4 sine of pi over 3. And this is where now the unit circle comes into play. Uh, because I know it, by the unit circle, the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative square root 2 over 2. And I know the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half plus sine of 3 pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2, and the sine of pi over 3 is square root 3 over 2. And so when we go and work with that one, that will become negative square root 2 over 4 plus uh, the square root 6 over 4. And so I'll get um, negative square root 2 plus the square root of 6 all over 4. There is one other way that this one could be written. What will happen is uh, if you look at what we have here in this problem, there is, there is a common factor there. Uh, 
And that common factor is square root 2 over 4. And so what will happen is they'll pull out a square root 2 over 4. And what's going to be left with then in the first part, uh, in this first part right there, is going to be a negative 1. And in the second part, plus the square root of 3. So you, and so what's going to happen on this, you will see both of, and both of these answers at some point. It'll be written in that way. So you just have to recognize that those are the same. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, the sine of 5 pi over 12. We know that's the sine of 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 3. And by the sine difference formula, that's sine of 3 pi over 4 cosine of pi over 3 minus the cosine of 3 pi over 4 sine of pi over 3. And so this becomes the sine of 3 pi over 4 is square root 2, square root two over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is times 1 half minus uh, the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative square root 2 over 2. And the sine of pi over 3 is a positive square root 3 over 2. And again, so what we have on that one is going to be square root 2 over 4 plus, I'll keep this separate. In this case, I'll pull out the, the common factor, square root 2 times the square root of 3 over 4. And when I pull out the common factor of square root 2 over 4, I'm left with 1 plus the square root of 3. And so I know that this is the exact value of the sine of 5 pi over 12. Another thing they're going to ask you to do on these problems is going to be to write a particular expression uh, in terms of a single trig function. So in this first case, what I have is the sine of 2x cosine 3x plus cosine 2x sine of 3x. And what I know on this one, I look at that and I say that is very similar to the sine sum formula. And the sine sum formula says that we would have that the sine of u plus v equals the sine of u cosine v plus cosine u sine v. So on this particular problem, when I look at it, I say, okay, my job is really going to be identifying u and v. So on this particular problem, I know u is 2x and v is 3x. So this actually is just equal to the sine of 2x plus 3x, which equals the sine of 5x. This next one is a little bit trickier because what we have on this one is the sine of a plus sine of b squared plus cosine of a cosine of b, b that quantity squared, minus 2. So what I'm going to need to do on this one is I'm going to need to go and foil that out. I'm going to have to take sine of a times sine of b and square it. And when I do that, um, that is going to become uh, sine squared a plus 2 sine a sine b plus sine squared b. And to that, I'm going to add what I get when I go and square uh, the cosine of a plus cosine of b. And that's going to be cosine squared a 
plus 2 cosine a cosine b plus cosine squared b. And I'm still going to have that minus 2 coming along at the end. And at this point now, we got to go and we're going to move things around. Well, the first thing I notice when I, when I square this, I have a sine squared a and a cosine squared a. I have a sine squared b and a cosine squared b. So I can rewrite this as sine squared a uh, plus cosine squared a plus sine squared b plus cosine squared b plus 2 sine a sine b plus 2 cosine a cosine b and then minus 2. By doing that, I know that this part right here by the Pythagorean identity, I know that's equal to 1. I also know that's equal to 1. So this has become now 1 plus 1 plus 2 sine a sine b plus 2 cosine a cosine b minus 2. Now the 1 plus 1 minus 2, these will cancel out. And now I'm looking at this piece right there. And I'm looking at that, that looks kind of familiar. That looks similar to the cosine difference formula. In other words, that looks, <clears throat> when I, if I take that and I, and I pull out a factor of 2, that's going to be 2 times, and if I switch the order, cosine of A, cosine of B, plus sine A, sine B. And that, if you remember, is the cosine difference. And so by that formula, that's going to be 2 times the cosine of A minus B. Next one we have is the conditional equation versus an identity. And really remember what happens on these. We want to go through and show, we want to, they're asking us, is this a conditional equation? Is it an identity? So we have to go through and, and determine if one side of the equation can be transformed into the other. And so what I'm going to do on this one, uh, I'm going to use the sum and difference formulas to help me out. <clears throat> this first one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that the cosine of 2x, that's the same thing as the cosine of x plus x. And by the cosine sum formula, I know that's going to be the cosine of the first, which is x, times the cosine of the second, which is x, minus sine of the first times sine of the second, which gives me cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So in this case, that first one is an identity. Now let's take a look at the second one. We want to determine if the sine of pi over 2 plus x can be transformed into the cosine of pi over 2 plus x. Well, what we have on this, we know, we'll just work, we, again, in this case, we can work with the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And so what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to go and I'll work on the, um, on the uh, left-hand side. So we'll just go with the sine of pi over 2 plus x. Now by the sine sum formula, I know that is the sine of the first, which is pi over 2, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, which is pi over 2, uh, cosine, or sorry, sine of the second, sine of x. And so that will become uh, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that's 1 times the cosine of x plus uh, cosine of pi over 2 is 0 times the sine of x. And so this just becomes the cosine 
of x. And so on this one here, I look at that, that's cosine of x. This is cosine of pi over 2 plus x. There's no way that x and pi over 2 plus x are the same angle. So therefore, this one would be a conditional equation. As with the cosine and sine sum and difference formulas, uh, we're, you know, the, ident the proofs for those are in the book. The same thing is true for the tangent sum and difference formulas. And so we can take a look at that in class, uh, if, you know, or you can take, oh, take a look in your book right now if you want. But the tangent sum and difference identities are the following. The sum for, of a tangent, so tangent of a plus b is tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tangent a tangent b. And the tangent difference formula is the tangent of A minus B is equal to tangent of A minus tangent of B over 1 plus tan A tan B. Notice in, in all these identities, notice what's, the, you, what's happening with the SIGNs, the addition and subtraction signs that we have in the problem and how they are related to what the, uh, the written as a sum of angles and then how it is with the formula, because that will come into play in terms of helping you kind of remember what these are as well. Now let's take a look at a couple examples. Uh, in this first example, what we have is the tangent of 47 degrees minus the tangent of 15 equals 1 plus the tangent of 47 tangent 15. Now if we look at that, we'll notice that looks very, that is basically, that is the tangent difference formula. So I know by the tangent difference formula, that would just be the tangent of 47 degrees minus 15 degrees, which equals the tangent of 32 degrees. And that would be my final answer on that one. In the next one, what we have is we're working on that one. We have the square root of 3 plus tangent of x over 1 minus the square root of 3 times the tangent of x. Now we have to look at that, we have to say, wait a second, I know the square root of three is a tangent of a angle on the unit circle. And if you uh, think about it, if you remember, great, if you uh, think about it, you, might, you can probably figure that one out. It does come out to be that the square root of three is a tangent of pi over three. So this would actually be written, we could think of that as the tangent of pi over three plus the tangent of x over 1 minus the tangent of pi over 3 times the tangent of x. And so I know this one now is the tangent sum formula. So this would be the tangent of pi over 3 plus x. And that would be its simplified form. So with that, that does conclude this video uh, dealing with the sum and difference identities for sine, cosine, and tangent. You're going to want to make sure, again, to uh, be aware of the SIGNs that you see uh, in the problem. When, when do you use, you know, in terms of the sum and difference formulas, when do you use an addition, when do you use a subtraction? Make sure you're comfortable with that. Uh, and again, these are ones that can be helpful if you can memorize them uh, in terms of uh, moving forward. So with that, um, you go through, make sure you highlight any questions that you have to be asking class, and then we will see you uh, in our next class.